This conference okay, guys. will now be recorded. Perfect. Okay, guys. So, Thanks for uh, joining me back. It will be the continuation to the last uh, discussion where we left. We let's resume from there. So we were talking about uh, bucketizer in Spark concepts. Bucketizer is nothing but if you have a requirement where you want to split the data set into uh, two based on your requirement, we do the bucketizing concept. So I'm using a bucketizer and using a new uh, class. I'm asking it to set input column as the departure delay, set output column as uh, uh, departure, set output column as uh, uh, delay, uh, delete. However, if it is greater than 40, then it will be delayed. So delayed will come under zero and not delayed will come under one. So now let's run this one and see what will happen. I'll continue from here so we can uh, make a progress. It's running now. It's showing pending. Perfect. See. This data frame two is nothing but a delay bucketizer with a transform function of DF1. What is DF1 you have? This is your DF1, this bit. This bit is your DF1. And DF2 is the transformed of data frame one with a bucketizer function applied on, on top of it. And I'm asking you to cache means persist the data in its memory. And I'm asking you to show the results group by delayed. So totally I got zero means not delayed 36,790. One is delayed, which is 4,558. Perfect. Now let's make a little progress further on understanding how things can be moved further. Okay. Now, if you see here, I, um, we are entering into the most interesting bit, which is called as uh, graphs. Okay. For you to for you to explore the data in the graphical interface, you first need to uh, register your data into a temporary view or a cache table. So I'm going to do that now. Simple guys, not to confuse you. Initially, you had one data frame. And then you added a column that came into data frame one. From data frame one, you applied an other bucketizer and which is called as DF2. From DF, you came to DF1. From DF1, you came to DF2. In DF2, you cached it. And after that, you applied a group by of delayed. So now let's have these tables persisted in the Sparks memory. Let's do that now. Simple, straightforward. You just have to do this one. But try to understand what you're what you what you are doing here. Let me explain that. So df2 dot create or replace temp view. So this df2 will be acting as a flight table for you. Let me run that. It's running now. Let me. It's running. Finished. Superb. It registered the table now. So your d your data frame two is nothing but a table called flights. Perfect. Here comes the interesting part. Now let's start visualizing the data in different prospects, slicing and dicing, probability and uh, permutations and combinations. Let's see that now. So first, what I'll do is I will first see top five longest departure delays top five longest departure delays means for example what happens is i i have already my flights table already has two things one is either delayed or not delayed in that one i'm selecting a carrier origin destination departure delay and scheduled departure hour distance by departure delay and i'm asking to show the top five records okay let me first do that one important thing you need to understand here is why are we using percentage sql okay let me show you that i'll copy paste here percentage sql is nothing but try to understand guys i tell you something when i have run this query it gave me only results now i'm using percentage sql and running this query let's see what happens 
I'll show you the difference now. I don't want this to be highlighted. I don't want this also to be highlighted. It will confuse you. Now, only this is highlighted, which means I'm running this one. Let me show you what happens. Okay. I know the error message of, I know why this error message is coming up. It is telling the percentage SQL is not found. What you need to do at this situation is come to the term, come to the top, go to this gear option. And here you have uh, this interpreter. Go and restart it. It will ask you, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. It will take a minute. What happens is your Spark interpreter must be able to. I'm restarting both Spark 1 and Spark 2 interpreters, guys. Please be aware of it, OK? I'll wait for it. Now I'll save it. Now, I don't want this to be highlighted. Don't worry. If I run this now, it should run. Let me check. It is still showing error message. I know the reason for it. The primary reason for this one is what happens is, you know, uh, your percentage SQL is not recognized. Okay, for that one, I'll remove everything. And uh, let me delete this one to avoid further confusions. I'm just deleting this paragraph. Perfect. Now, if you see here, percentage SQL, and I will say select career. Okay, let me do this now. I'll pay now. If I paste it and if I remove this from here, it will work. The reason for this one is it is just a syntax way of how you are. Uh, see now it's running. Do you see that it's pending? It is submitted to Yarn, so it is running now. Let's wait for two minutes. I'll show you the magic it, it's doing. Percentage SQL is nothing but your your. Spark has got several APIs. Spark has got several uh, Spark context, Hive context, SQL context. Using SQL context, you are trying to get the data in an interactive way using pie charts, flow charts, bar diagrams like that. For that to work and happen, your percentage SQL must be picked up by your Zeppelin interpreter properly. Initially, when I copy pasted, it didn't take it. So what I have done is I went ahead and restarted my Spark interpreter and manually typed percentage SQL. So it picked up. It's running now. Let's give it a minute. So what is it saying? It is saying that a table is not found. I know the reason for that because let me first erase from here. I will say oh, what I can do is I'll say from Flight table, flight table is already registered. Flight table, nothing but this bit. You are fine. And from flights, and after that, order by. And it's departure delay. Okay. And I'm asking to show me top limit using this one. Okay. Now it will run. The only problem is it was not able to identify. Table of you not found. Okay, give me one second, guys. Let me run this once again and see how it will behave. It should work actually. DF2 dot temp table is not found. Okay. I think the okay. I understood the problem. I have restarted the interpreter. When I restart the interpreter, it has lost all the uh, all the uh, memory, all the data it has cached. So what I'll do is I'll do this bit once again. This also is failing because the top one is failed. So now let's do something. Let's start from beginning. I'll say this one. I'll ask it to run all the paragraphs. Let's see the magic. Okay. The first one is running. Do you see here? Good. It's finished. The second one is running now. Finished. It came to third one. It's running now. Okay, perfect. Go on. That's good. This is pending. This is running. This is finished. Cool. Now it came to the next one. This is also finished. Cool. And now it's running the yeah. See guys, see see what it's doing. Perfect. That's nice. I appreciate it. Cool. Yeah, perfect. And this also looks okay. It's running 40%, 60% finished. Cool. And now it came to flights. Cool. Okay. Now Everything is finished. Do you see this? 
this also finished it ran properly now try to understand folks this is the numerical data what you have now if i see here look at the wonderful graph what i got and if you want to do some more slicing and dicing i can do this way it will show me this way i'm grouping by test okay and if i want to order by uh, distance it looks this way doesn't make sense let me make this let me take it off and if i group by career this is how it looks okay now if i group by origin this is how it looks san francisco boston uh, ord is the international award the name i don't remember it's miami that's fine don't worry i'm from uk guys so I, i'm not familiar with us airlines i've just uh, uh, did this uh, to help to make this video okay uh, this is fine this is like this and uh, other way to do it is if you take the values as origin this is how it looks if you want you can take it off okay now if you are happy with the settings do this okay this is the graphical picture of it so first one is this is the top 5 longest departure delays okay like this you can also calculate the average departure delay by career how do you do that the first thing is go and use percentage sql and then select career yes i want career which airlines is and average what average do you want you want average of departure guys simple guys the first one is top departure delays this one is top five departure delays and second one is i am calculating average departure delay by career so average when i am calculating average departure delay i have to use average option for that specific column from the table called flights okay and i am grouping it by what i'll have to group it by career because i want average departure delay by career okay now let me show you how this looks it's running i'll have to wait for few minutes perfect now let me show the graph for you do you see the graph united airlines <coughs> american airlines delta uh, wn i'm not sure what wn is this is how it looks okay this is the select average departure delay by career now let's see maximum departure delay by career very simple instead of average just replace it with max percentage sql select sorry sorry for spelling mistake select career perfect and then what are you doing here you are taking max max of what max of departure delay earlier you did average now you are doing uh, uh, max from which table from flights table after from flights table what are you grouping it by you are grouping it by career don't worry guys group by order by all these things we'll discuss in later stages today our agenda is to complete the whole machine learning product life cycle the first video is completed and it's uploaded on youtube and this is the second video this will be short 30 minutes video next will 30 minutes next will 30 minutes we'll finish it in four videos and we'll upload it today okay now we are we are calculating the maximum departure delay by career let's see how this will look like it is telling boss spelling mistake one minute let me cross check i am using career max delay now it will work because i have given the space again it is giving the same error message something is wrong let me quickly check C A R R I E R. Okay, select carrier is correct. Maximum of departure delay from flight table, group by carrier column. Perfect. This is UI, so sometimes it tend to confuse. You need to be very careful while you write the queries. Good. This run. Let me check the status now. 
and if you see the status this is what it is this is the maximum daily part it is showing now guys you are getting a clear sense of the data you are initially you only had a raw data and you are slicing and dicing in such a way to understand the more uh, artifacts or behavior of this data so you can fine tune or start planning your model now let me go on to next step my next step would be average departure delay by destination earlier you took maximum de departure delay by carrier now i am going to do by destination what i have to do is i will write a select what columns i want i want destination column and i want average of what departure delay column okay once i get average of departure delay column i will use it as average depth delay okay one minute this syntax error here i you need to bear with me for one minute for this select destination is good average of departure delay is good and this is called as avg deep delay because i'm giving it an alias name from flights table we have reached at the flights a temporary table and now i'm grouping it by what i will group by destination and i'll also order by average delay you may ask me a question amarnath where do you where do i have to use order by where do you have to use group by i'll tell you that a little later any any questions you may be new to data science you may be an expert in data science or you are just learning data science or you might have got good career good career experience and new to data science don't worry put all your questions here i'm trying to make this video so that so that a student who just passed a student will be able to understand what data science is so don't worry about it go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, put all your questions i'll answer them okay order by average delay disk let's do it this way and let's see how it is looking like again average delay is having a problem okay because here alias name i have given by average departure delay here i have given as average delay so let me not confuse this one alias name and your reference column must always be the same thing now it will run for sure without any error message wow uh, cannot browse average delay avg delay okay the thing is i need to give space here now it will run small mistakes let me run this once again there is no big difference actually I'll run this once again. I'll write this once again, or we can copy and paste it. Copy and paste won't work in the scenario because you know because see uh, the interpreter will wrongly uh, take the values when you copy paste it. Your comma may be taken as a colon on the right side of it. Do you know um, a colon, a comma, and a colon will be confused between Mac and Windows like that. The Zeppelin interface is kind of little sensitive, so sometimes you have to uh, uh, you have to use write queries rather than copying pasting it. So average of departure delay, this is done. And after this, I'm aliasing it as average delay. Perfect. Now I need these details from flights table, and I wanted to group it by. destination and i wanted to order it by average delay okay and i can say it as disk in descending order now it's running see i have not done anything guys it is still the same but it sometimes happens yeah so now if you see here san francisco ewr this is how it is looking so this is average departure delay by destination okay now let me go to average departure delay by origin okay simple i am trying to get the data i am trying to understand the behavior of the data i am trying to understand and get the sense of the data so how well i can make my predictions work properly 
so these are all giving me a good information on how to plan my next set of things now again i'll do percentage sql this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to find uh, uh, by origin okay by this is this is destination guys simple thing is i need to do by origin so what i'll do is i'll copy this one here and i'll paste it here instead of origin group by what i'll do is i'll take here i gave destination so i'll i want origin here and also group by origin here again okay if you see this one understand what happens it's running perfect let's see how it goes yeah it is almost looking same when you check with the uh, destination and origin so whether the flight is delayed because of because of the uh, departure time it is same way it is telling at the arrival time so ewr ewr is same in the most cases lga is here dn is here this two are all this two and this two seems to be same so i'm getting some sense on how this data is looking okay that's perfect now the other important area what i have to find is i need to find average depart delay by day of the week day of the week means are these airlines very late on weekends or on the weekdays to do that what i have to do is i need to do select dofw which is day of week and i'm taking the average of departure delay and this average departure delay what i can say is i can say as avg delay i'm giving it an alias name alias name is nothing but you are taking average of the column departure delay when you take average of departure delay column you can name it you can give a name to that column i'm giving it as average delay so from which table from flight table now what do you order by you want to first group by spelling mistake group by day of week sorry day of week and you want to order it by what order should be upper case oh yeah it's fine it shouldn't be a big deal order by average delay in descending order let me check this one it's running let's check 40% 50% finished cool now do you see that average delay now if you want to make any changes to this one see here it is showing average delay right because on your x axis you have uh, features on y axis you have labels just imagine like that now if i do it like this if i pull it in the average delay of groups see how it is showing and if i don't group it by additionally this one if i group it by the here how it is looking it's looking different right now what i'll do is i'll take the values here to show you if there is any difference it is showing a bit different this this is how you can slice and sli slice and dice the data or change the uh, not changing it understanding how the various aspects of your data is looking like okay once you're happy just remove the settings now let's do it this way as uh, the last thing we did is we have taken the average departure delay by day of the week okay now i want to understand count of departure delay by day of the week means monday is 1 tuesday is 2 like that friday is 5 saturday is 6 sunday is 7 like this one what i want to understand is i want to understand the departure delay by day of the week means at departure end i mean if my flight is going to boston in boston which day the flights are uh, more delayed let me find out let me find that out percentage sql good i'll say select day of week w perfect i'm taking count try to understand the difference till now i have taken average but now i have moved to count i'll tell you why i have taken count i explain you that don't worry 
uh, this is fine. I'll take it from flights table. I want uh, date of week and where depth delay is greater than 40. Okay. And I wanted to group this one by DOFW, means date of week. It's running. Let's check. Super. We got the result. Let's see the graphical interface. Super. We got the sense of it. If you also can shoot pie charts, you can also take area chart. You can also see line chart. You can also see scatter chart. Okay. Now, this is what we need. Simple, guys. Now, earlier I checked average flight departure delays, maximum flight departure delays. And uh, now I came to days, means I'm scrutinizing. I'm, I'm nailing down the data so I can get more clarity on how I can present the business use case or I can solve the problem. Okay. Now, this is also done. Deep delay group by UFW. Perfect. Now, let's count the by carrier. By carrier means by airlines. Okay. Percentage SQL. Good job. And uh, let's do select DOFW, day of week. And uh, we have already done for weeks. Departure lab. Now let's do it by carrier. Count is already done. Now I want to do the count of departure delays by carrier means which airlines got the departure delays. So I don't want day of week. I want carrier because I'm looking for count of departure delay by carrier. So I want which airlines uh, delayed the count. So count of delayed. Perfect. I'll give you very proper uh, headings for this one. Don't worry. Here I'll give you a query. Here I, I'll one minute. I'll tell you what I'm trying to say. I'll put a proper heading here. I'll put a proper heading here. So I'll put a proper heading here. So you'll understand uh, the you'll understand what it is. One second, guys. Okay. Now select carrier count of delayed from which table from your flights which is cache table superb and where delayed equal to one. Do you remember, guys? Earlier, when we used uh, val bucketizer, we split the data into zero and one. Zero is uh, delayed, and one is not delayed. Okay. So group by carrier option, spelling mistake, and order by carrier. Let me check how this looks. It started, it's running. Perfect. Let me see how this goes. Superb. This also gave me a good understanding of how uh, the departure delays are happening by carrier. Uh, American Airlines, Delta, United Airlines, and the WN is for, I don't know what is that, but I, I got the sense of it. Now, what I have to understand is I need to see if I can get further options, further uh, filtering of data. Okay. Let me quickly do that. Okay, this is fine. So that carrier is done. Uh, now, one last thing I can do is count of departure delay by hour of the day. By hour of the day means uh, the way how I can explain you is by which hour the flights are delayed more. Is it our 11th hour, 12th hour, or peak delay times like that? So for that, what I can do is I'll say percentage SQL. I will say select. What do you want to select? You want CRS depth hour because this is the column which has that information. CRS depth hour, and I want to take the count. Count of what? Departure delay. OK? And from departure delay, is in flights table so i'll go to flights table and where where depth delay is greater than 40 perfect i wanted to group this one by crs depth crs depth power crs sorry spelling mistake crs depth hour 
superb now let me check what happens started there is count spelling mistake sorry guys sorry for that let me run this now it's running superb now let me see the graphical interface superb this makes sense to me so this one is showing count of departure delays Zero, 1 hour, 6th hour, 8th hour, 10th hour, 12th hour, 14th hour, 16th hour, 18th hour. So at 5 p.m., you are having more flight delays. Okay. If you want to further play with this data, go to settings. And you can just group here. If you see here, it is showing more granular data. And if you want to uh, check this one here, do you see that? It is telling you a bit different count and delay. So you can slice and dice like this. OK, don't worry about that. Let me go back. Yeah. Now, what I want is I have got the information about count of departure delay by hour of that day. Now I want count of delayed, not delayed by hour. If the flight is delayed not less than hour, I want to get that. Let me get that information. Percentage SQL, superb. Let's select delayed and then count of delayed. Okay. And then CRS depth hour. I'll make this video short. We'll conclude in next 10 minutes and then we'll start building the model. CRS the power from which table from flight stable. Okay. After that, it's grouped by CRS depth hour. And then you are also looking for delayed options. So I'm I wanted to group that and order by delayed. Perfect. Superb. Let me quickly see what happens. It's running. Perfect. It gave me the data. I had me a one graph interface. Okay. This makes a little less sense to me. Now, if I group it by count of delayed, I don't want this. If I group it this way, this is fine. Or if I check this by deleting groups, okay, that is fine. Now, Count of data is already taken. I'm just checking the other other ways of getting the data in a different way. Value is always taking some. Okay, this is how you can play with the data. So you have got the information. Let's close this one. Let's remove this one. So this information is also about the relevant uh, uh, slicing and dicing of your. Uh, Flight information. So this one is count of delayed, count of count of delayed, not delayed by an hour. Means flight which is not delayed, not less than an hour. Okay. Actually, I want to uh, deep dive this in more further, which I'm looking for. Let me see if I can get it like this. Okay. So yeah, this is five minutes, eight minutes, eleven minutes, fourteen minutes. But how can I find the flight? Which flight is that? That's fine. We got the information what we need. We want how it is looking for uh, not less than an hour. OK, that's fine. Now let's move on to the next bit. We want to understand count of departure delays by origin. All this while we are talking about destinations and uh, day of the week and all these things. Now let's find departure delays by origin. So as usual, I use percentage SQL. OK. And uh, what happens is in percentage SQL, you have to go with, be careful here, select. See, do you see the, se the select color has to change? E S E L E C T. If select color is changed, then it's identified, it's detected. Select, you want departs delay by origin. I have already taken that, I believe. One minute. Now, uh, I have grouped by CRS to power. That is done. Now, departure this by origin. Let's take this one. Select delayed. 
or I want origin because delayed I already taken select origin. And I want count of departure delay because I want to get the count of uh, departure delays by origin, right? So I want count. I want the count of departure delay from the table called flights. Okay, where departure delay is greater than 40 minutes. Guys, we are trying to identify the flights that are delayed more than 40 minutes. Okay. For that reason, we are checking all the all the uh, we are deep diving into each and every element that is given to us as part of data set. That's it. Now I'll group this by origin. And I'll order this by origin again. Oh shit. Sorry, I shouldn't have run it. Order by origin. Now let's see this one. It's running 85%. I got the information. Let's run this one. Perfect. This is what it is showing. I'm happy. Now we have we have now we have just now seen the count of departure delays by origin. Okay. If you want to deep dive further, what you can see is you can group this one by both origin and delayed that you can do but let's not go that deep because we're happy with what we got now all this information are pretty straightforward we understood how our data is behaving we understood let me see how much time we spend on this one we started 11 48 it's 12 25 okay i'll make this video very short because with this one our data uh, man our data pre our uh, understanding the slicing and dicing or uh, understanding the data usage is made aware so once this is done our next bit will be moving further on how we are stratifying the sampling and how we are splitting the training set and test set and how we use a categorical column how we use a string indexer to encode a categorical column and then we start writing the uh, machine learning model which will be very very interesting okay so i'm going to end this i'm going to end this video now so once this video is uh, completed i'll upload it and then we can take it forward from there so as of now we are very clear initially we understood how what where now we are doing practicality of it okay in next session we will get back and start resuming on writing the models let's let's wind it up here and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much